Okay, in this video I want to discuss energy coupling and I want to um, show you basically what energy coupling is, how it works, and I also have high energy bonds here, mostly talking about ATP. That's going to probably be the one you'll be asked to explain and give details about. And um, after these videos, I don't know how you know how much detail I'm going to cover the um, free energy equations. That's stuff that's usually covered in chemistry too. Um, I'll, I will cover them a little bit and do a couple problems, but I'm not going to go into depth on on those um, in depth on those problems because again, that's something you cover in other classes. Not all that important for our purposes. So energy coupling, so a spontaneous reaction can be used to drive a non-spontaneous reaction. So we can actually use this energy coupling to make things that are not favorable, that are not thermodynamically favorable and couple them with something that is thermodynamically favorable and make the reaction work, okay? So free energy changes of half reactions may be summed to yield the free energy of a coupled reaction. So I'm going to actually do an example of this. I'm going to write it out. Um, I'm dedicated to improving my handwriting for everybody so that it's um, a little bit better and more legible. Um, so the standard free energy changes are additive. That's the other important thing. Essentially, you just add these values together. It's really not all that difficult. Um, but it's important that you at least see how it works. So if I have this reaction here, I have A, you know, A to B, and that's my delta G1. And then I have B to C, that's delta G2. I want to couple these two reactions together to make A to C, okay? And basically, in order to get the free energy change here, or to calculate the free energy, I'm just going to add delta G1 plus delta G2. Okay, that's what I mean by they're added. That's what I mean by standard free energy changes are additive. So, what's an example here of coupling? So, if we have ATP, right? So, if we have ATP plus H2O and a move over to ADP plus PI, okay, plus inorganic phosphate. So I have ATP plus H2O. So the delta G, or rather the standard free energy change here, is equal to negative 31. And I want to just, you know, that's negative 31, but I want to just say what the units are. The units, I'm not going to use kcals. Um, it depends on the book you're using, but I'm going to use kilojoules per mole, okay? So kilojoules per mole, that's our unit. So this is negative 31. Now, what I want to do is I want to couple it to this reaction here. So inorganic phosphate plus glucose. So plus glucose. And that goes over to glucose 6-phosphate. So glucose, I'm just going to say glucose 6P because I'm running out of room here, plus ADP. So plus ADP. Okay, right? So now the last thing I want to do is give that free energy, standard free energy change. So delta G is equal to plus 14. Okay, so that's plus 14. And remember, that's in kilojoules per mole. Okay? So if I want to know, if I want to draw the coupled reaction, I hope I have enough space to do this here without impeding too much. So if I want to draw the coupled reaction, it's going to be ATP plus glucose. So plus glucose gives me glucose 6P, right? Plus ADP. Plus ADP. Okay, that's the entire reaction. That's the coupled reaction. So this could almost be like a line drawn through here, separating the two half reactions and then showing the coupled reaction here. Okay? Now, if I were to calculate the standard free energy change, it would be really simple. I would just say delta G1 plus delta G2, and that's going to equal, I'll say, delta G final, right? Standard free energy change to final for the reaction. So for that part, I'm just going to come right up here and do it, okay? So delta G1 over here is negative 31 kilojoules per mole. So negative 31 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and I'm going to add that to the 
plus 14, so plus 14 kilojoules per mole. And that's going to equal negative 17 kilojoules per mole. So that's negative 17, and that's just kilojoules per mole. Okay, so negative 17. Now, what does that tell you? It tells you that by coupling these two half reactions, one that was unfavorable and one that was very favorable, thermodynamically favorable, we ended up with a favorable reaction overall. Negative 17. Remember, if the delta G is negative, it's going to be spontaneous. Okay, so this is this is good. This is what we want. We can get this reaction here that we previously couldn't get to go to go. So we were trying to phosphorylate. This is known as phosphorylation of glucose. So we're trying to phosphorylate glucose to make glucose 6-phosphate and ADP. And we we're able to make that happen by coupling it to this reaction here. Okay? The next thing I want to talk about briefly is high energy bonds. Moving to a slightly different topic here. And they might ask you on an exam to explain, you know, why ATP releases a lot of free energy when it's hydrolyzed. And ATP is adenosine triphosphate, okay? Hydrolysis of ATP releases a large amount of free energy. But the question is why? What makes, what makes ATP a useful, a useful um, energy producing molecule? Well, what I'll, sh what I'll first, I'll, what I'll do here is try and draw the ATP molecule for you guys. So just ever so briefly. Going back to our organic chemistry days, okay? So there's a hydroxyl down here. There's another one down here, right? And there's this CH2 right there. And this is where the phosphates are attached. And what these are is phosphodiester bonds. I'm probably gonna run out of space here, but I'm going to try. And there's a negative charge on this one right here, another negative charge here, and another negative charge on the end here, and one more right there, okay? So let me get that on camera. So here's the three phosphates, there's one, two, three, four negative charges, okay? That's important, these four negative charges. Negative charge on oxygen, negative charge on oxygen, negative charge on oxygen, negative charge on oxygen. These are phosphodiester bonds here, and there's an adenine molecule up here. I'll see if I can remember how to draw that off the top of my head. So that's like that. Something like that. N. N. Boom, boom. Boom. NH2. Okay. So here is ATP, and this is a molecule of ATP. Um, and w the important things to notice about this, and that's exactly what I have here, this is the why. So why is this important? And that's because there's electrostatic repulsion. There are four negative charges on ATP, okay? So these four negative charges create a lot of electrostatic repulsion. This is unstable. It wants to, it wants to react, essentially. It wants to be hydrolyzed there's greater resonance stability of the phosphate. So once this phosphate group is cleaved off and this becomes ADP, that phosphate group now has various resonance structures and it can form more resonance structures when it's free in solution than when it's attached to the ATP molecule and that's what's important here. So the products are more fully solivated and that's and what ends up happening here is that this is going to be more fully solivated in solution. And the result is an increase in entropy because there's going to be an increase in disorder in the universe. So that's basically why ATP is, um, is a high energy molecule. So really, it, it, it's funny because it actually doesn't really have anything to do specifically with, you know, what you might think about the energy. It actually has to do with this electrostatic repulsion and resonance stability once you cleave off one of these phosphate groups. So it's kind of a strange thing, but it's important to understand how to explain it, okay?